Consider this program right here. It takes an SHA-256 password hash as the input and tries to crack it with the help of a word list called rockyou.txt. It's a simple dictionary attack. It takes each line from the word list, which is a potential password, converts that password into an SHA-256 password hash, and then compares this hash with the target hash that we want to crack. If they match, well, it means the password is cracked. It also prints out the current status of the program so that we know the status of the cracking job. Now, let's execute this program and see how much time it takes to crack the target password hash. But before that, let me take a moment to thank the sponsors of this video. This video is sponsored by Bluehost. Bluehost is an all-in-one platform that will help you get your ideas online. Whether you're starting a blog, a small business, or an online store, Bluehost is your go-to solution. With Bluehost's cheap and reliable services, you can get your website online without much hassle. Depending on your use case, you can either go with their shared hosting, which is good for beginners and small businesses, or dedicated hosting, which is ideal for enterprise-level websites with resource-intensive needs, or VPS hosting, which is ideal for medium-sized projects, and the option that I always choose when working on my projects. All the plans include a free domain for one year, unmetered bandwidth, free SSL certificate, daily malware scans to keep your site safe, and a free speed boosting CDN to optimize your website. Bluehost customer service is also one of the finest, so if you're facing any issues with your website, you can get it rectified as soon as possible with their amazing customer support. So go ahead and check out Bluehost by clicking the link in the description below. I am sure you will not regret it. It takes two minutes, nine seconds to crack the password. What if you want to make your program run faster by utilizing multiple cores on your CPU? The most intuitive approach would be to convert this program, which is initially single-threaded, into a multi-threaded program, right? In multi-threading, there are multiple threads under the same program. All the threads share the same memory space because they are still part of the same main program and each thread does its own task independently. In our case, all the threads must share the same task of cracking the password. The motive of multi-threading is to be able to execute code concurrently, which means at the same time by utilizing the idle cores of your CPU. This obviously comes with many benefits and the most important benefit is that the code actually takes less time to execute it simply runs faster. So here is the same code converted into a multi-threaded version. I'm using four threads, and in order to share the cracking job in between these four threads, I convert the word list into four chunks and pass each chunk into each thread. The hope here is that these four threads can run concurrently, ultimately making the whole cracking job faster. Let me run the code and see the time taken to crack the password. It took 51 seconds to crack the password, which is definitely better than the single thread program that took two minutes, nine seconds to crack the same password. So problem solved. We can conclude that multi-threading is faster than a single threaded program, right? Hold on, let's try that again. But this time, let's keep an eye on the CPU utilization for both the single threaded program and the multi-threaded program and compare them. You can see that the CPU utilization of both these programs are almost the same. So it is pretty evident that the multi-threaded program is not using any more CPU than what the single-threaded program is using. But why? 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 Let me introduce you to the concept of global interpreter lock. It is simply a global lock on the Python's interpreter that allows only one thread to execute the bytecode at any given time. So no matter how many threads your program has, only one thread can be in the execution state at any given point of time. So in other words, a multi-threaded Python program is essentially just running like a single threaded program, except the threads are just rapidly being switched by the operating system under the hood. But why use GIL in the first place if it nullifies the benefits of multi-threading? Well, it is added to Python to make the runtime memory thread safe. You see, instead of adding smaller locks to individual Python objects, a global lock is added to the Python's interpreter to remove deadlocks and remove the performance overhead 
caused by these smaller locks. So each thread has to first acquire this global interpreter lock before it can actually run its code. So does this mean multi-threading in Python is absolutely useless? The answer fortunately is no. It is not completely useless. Multi-threading is not ideal for CPU bound tasks, or in other words, tasks that require more CPU power, but multi-threading is good for IO bound tasks, or in other words, tasks that spend time waiting for input or output operation from an external source, like reading a file or querying a database or waiting for a response from a website. Because in such tasks, the waiting time can be eliminated because the thread can just be switched and a new thread can run while the other thread is waiting for the input output operation. This way the code is ultimately faster than a single threaded program. But back to our problem. If we know that multi-threaded program cannot make use of multiple cores of the CPU, why is its execution time better than the single threaded version? This is because in the multi-threaded program, the word list is not enumerated linearly. Since we split the word list into four chunks and gave each chunk as an input to each thread, these four threads are rapidly switched by the operating system. And we do not know in which order each password from the word list is processed. So we might have just gotten lucky with it. To prove this point, let me remove the return statement from both the single threaded and the multi-threaded program. This makes sure that the whole word list is processed before the code finishes executing. So we actually get to know the execution time of these programs in their worst case scenarios. So let me run the programs again. And the output now makes more sense. You can see that the multi-threaded version took significantly more time than the single threaded program to enumerate through the whole word list. This is because there is simply more overhead in the multi-threaded program because the threads are switched rapidly by the operating system. And there is also a print lock in the code that the threads must first acquire before printing the status onto the terminal. This makes the code execution actually slower than the single threaded program. Now let me remove the print statement from the program because I don't want to deal with the print lock and the extra overhead that it brings. Let's see if this improves the speed of the program. 18 seconds. The execution time went from five minutes to 18 seconds. That's crazy. This is incredibly faster than the single threaded version, which took four minutes to enumerate the whole word list. But that cannot be right, because we know that the multi-threaded program cannot run faster than the single threaded program when enumerating the whole word list, because the multi-threaded program essentially just runs as a single threaded program under the hood. The only difference between the single threaded code and the multi-threaded code is that the multi-threaded code doesn't have the print statement. So let me remove this print statement from the single threaded code as well and run it. 16 seconds is what it took to execute the code. And this is when I found out the underrated culprit of my code, the print function. Since the print function is used in every iteration of the loop to print the status of the job for every new password processed from the word list, it adds a staggering amount of overhead to the program and makes the code a lot slower. Removing this print statement actually increased the performance speed of the program by around 93%. That's just incredible. I don't know about you, but the next time I write code in Python, I'm going to take the print function very seriously because I just discovered it adds an incredible amount of overhead to the program. So no more unnecessary print statements in the code from now on. Anyway, we still did not figure out a way to make use of the multiple idle cores of the CPU to actually make the program run faster. This is where multiprocessing comes into the play. Instead of creating multiple threads within a process, you create multiple individual processes. Each process has its own interpreter, so it has its own global interpreter lock. Hence, you won't be limited by the GIL and your code will actually be able to execute parallelly on multiple cores of your computer. The disadvantage of this approach is that since each worker is a different individual process that is spawned by your operating system, 
they do not share the same memory space. So the communication between the processes is quite expensive because the sender process must serialize the data and the receiver process must deserialize it after receiving it from the sender. And this obviously adds a lot of overhead because let me tell you, serialization and deserialization are computationally expensive tasks. So as long as there is not too much inter-process communication, multiprocessing should work just fine. And in our case, there is almost no need for any inter-process communication. So multi-threading should be the way to go for us. Here is the program rewritten for multiprocessing using the multiprocessing library. Oh, and I'm also going to remove the print statement because I don't want to deal with that. And let's see how it performs. You can see that the CPU utilization is definitely more compared to the other two programs and 10 seconds is what it took to enumerate through the whole word list, which is definitely better than both the single threaded version and the multi threaded version. So the lessons that must be learned from this video. Number one, if your task is CPU bound, then it's better to go with either single threaded or use multiprocessing. Do not go with multi-threading because that's just going to make your performance speed a lot worse. On the other hand, if your task is IO bound, then you might as well go with multi-threading because that's going to improve your code performance. Number two, take the print function of Python very seriously. Do not be irresponsible in using it because it actually adds a lot of overhead to your program. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it. If you did like this video, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up below. If you're not yet a subscriber, please do hit that subscribe button and also turn on the bell icon to receive instant updates from my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, cheers.